Uh, welcome, if you're on YouTube, to Pester Quest. This is volume, what, seven and eight, I guess? I don't know how time works. You know, shit, dude, I, I don't fucking know. Uh, but yeah, we're, uh... We're getting places with this game now. So let's go ahead and get started here. In-game HUD available. Thanks. Thanks, Discord. Fuck off. That clown emoji is going to be getting a lot of ease today. So we're starting with him. Fucking cannons. How do they work? So I, I should preface before I do this voice. There is a man named Tommy Wiseau. He, with his brilliant mind, decided in 2003 that he would make his own movie. That movie is called The Room. It is one of the worst movies of all time. This voice will be a tribute to that man. I, I attribute this voice to that man. That mystery man. Mr. Wiseau. I got I got four total fan arts of, of Mr. Wiseau as Gamzee. I, I got one from, from Perp earlier, and I got a, I got a few others. Hold on. I will I will share them on the stream real quick. Uh for anyone who wants to see them. And then we will begin. Is that one? Is this one? There's this one. <laughs> And now there's that one. That's, uh... Gamzee Wazo. <laughs> Fucking iconic. Alright. We're gonna go ahead and get started here. Yeah, you're not missing much if you haven't watched The Room yet. It's one of my favorites, but it's just god- it's god-awful. It's just real fucking bad. Uh, so let us begin with a uh, good old gam. Clown man. Oh. Oh? Okay, we're not even starting with a black screen. First things first, you deliver car cat. It, okay, no, hold on. Let me make sure this is. I didn't fuck something up. Let me make sure I didn't fuck something up. Let's go back to the main menu real quick. Yes. Start. We're gonna make sure. Okay. First things first, you deliver Carcat into the arms of a giant white crab, which strikes you as a totally normal th and safe thing to do. You're really beginning to get the hang of the zap situation. For instance, you are now capable of utilizing it without unleashing a lengthy exposition on the values of interpersonal relationships. You can just go. Lucky, too. Since when you drop Carcat off of his place, he does not look like he's in the mood for philosophy. More for crawling into bed and sleeping for a week. You don't blame him. Dave and John are nice kids, but they do require a high level of buy-in to talk to. You know, one second. I forgot to turn on my air conditioning. It's gonna get hot in here if I keep doing this fucking... Fucking pester quest. So hold on. Here I go. Ah. Uh, air conditioner adventure. Oh, that's that... There's an AC kick-on noise. Here we go. Death ending first. Fuck you. <clears throat> okay. Now we are ready. Since you have a memory like a steel friendship trap, you recall there's another possible bro in the area. What had Karkat called the kid that lost his shit at the thought of meeting? Macarena? Macaroni? You zap to Macaroni's house. This time you aim for the yard and not the broom closet and find yourself outside a huge sandstone castle at the edge of a dark, sprawling ocean. You'd have said it was abandoned if it wasn't for the lights in the windows. There he is. I gotta check the music here. My audio's being a little iffy, so if this ends up being too loud, definitely let me know. Well, this music is good. This is like some Stardew shit. Oh, let me crank this for a second. This is like Earthbound or Stardew. I, 
kind of don't want to make it too low. I'll make it low just in case. It's pretty good. It's pretty good. Alright, that should be good. <laughs> Standing at the tide line is some sort of Halloween decoration. A scarecrow made entirely of sticks and hair and a pair of oversized gray pants. Wait, they probably don't even have Halloween here. It's already spooky enough already. A nocturnal world can't even fuck with night holidays. The scarecrow throws a rock into the surf, winding up his long, thin arm as a whole production, although the motion is surprisingly fluid. You edge closer, not wanting to alarm him, but needing to move the plot along at a reasonable clip. You clear your throat. Oh! We did him a- we did him a, a scare. The boy- <laughs> I regret saying that. The boy Scarecrow does the laziest double take you've ever seen. It's like he's on half speed. What the fuck, are you lost? That's a little forward. Not that, uh, not that you aren't hip to all the choicest trends that the kids are on. You have absolutely no problem with some random teen just swearing at you out of the blue. It's absolutely fine. In fact, you love it. Makara, that's what his name was. Do you ever look at the ocean? You know, really get your eye stocks going on it? Well, yeah, you're doing that right now, actually. Since the ocean is right in front of you, and it's very hard not to see it, at least out of the corner of your eye. Oh, dang. Felt for sure you were someone's little lost loses on the count of you being white all over. Not my old goat, for sure. That old bastard's never once showed his ugly skull to sharp pie. Tide creeps up to the beach and you take an automatic step back. The water looks normal and Makara is up to his shins in the surf, but you still don't trust like that. That's meme. You can teleport, but that doesn't mean you want your toes burned off by alien salt water or whatever the fuck. What about you, stranger? I gave you guys, like, I warned you, like... 15 hours ago, I was like, you better steal yourself for the Wizzo voice. You ever get down on a hot, warm plate of gooey mess? Uh. Pie, motherfucker! I got one in the oven! Oh, how silly of you. You love pie. You love it so much more than any weird shit you thought he was talking about. He grins, and oh god. Horror opens up a pit in your stomach as his skin cracks before you realize that it's makeup. He's got face paint on you. You guess kind of like a clown thing going on? It tracks. The big pants, the crazy hair, etc. That's actually kind of fucking weird. But really not as weird as it should be. Like everything since you began this r rollicking friendship romp. This new information feels like remembering rather than learning. But right now, all you really care about is learning or remembering is that sweet pie the kid mentioned. Hell yeah. You cut your pan all where it's supposed to be. In your sack. Gamzy. Come again. Gamzy. Bless you. My name, motherfucker. For a second, the kid's vacant stare sharpens. His gray eyes are looking down a long, empty corridor. But just for a briefest moment, you think you see something lurking at the end of it. Something angry. And then it's gone. Gamzy brings you inside his hive, which is lopsided and shakes when the wind blows. Whoever designed it definitely got their architecture degree online. It also smells a lot like weed. You step into the living room. Honk. Oh, Jesus Christ. There are like 40 little honk horns strewn around on the floor, in a pattern that makes it absolutely inevitable that you would step on most of them on the way to the couch. You give up after a few seconds. That is just a normal-ass TV. Can we talk about that? Like, I don't remember canonically what troll TVs look like. Do they usually just look like a TV? Because that just looks like a TV. Was there just a voice in the song? I could have sworn I just heard a human man say miracles. Or something. Huh. That was terrifying. What? Whoa, wait, doodles! Oh, right, you've been going in and out the doctor. Fuck, I forgot about that. No, I haven't listened to this song before. Doodles, are you okay? 
Can you hear me? I don't even know if Doodles can fucking hear me. Are you okay? And I'm getting tested. For what? You're always getting tested. For like everything. <laughs> um, you give up a few seconds of careful hopping and honk your way across the room. It's a goose party up in here. <laughs> oh yeah, brother, make that music. Sometimes it all gets too much to contain, you know what I'm saying? Doodles, none of what you're saying makes sense to me. Gamzee sticks his head around the door to what you assume must be the kitchen. He's got flour on his nose. You thought he said the pie was already in the oven. What's he using flour for? The music builds up, don't it? It's like a miracle. Like a little ball of snot. What's all caught up in your sucks, sphincters? You actually have no idea what he's talking about. And you're pretty sure that's not your fault. A bunch of clattering and banging interrupts your thoughts. Dear God, what is he doing in there? How hard is he baking? Then you realize it isn't coming from the kitchen. It's coming from a different door. A closet door. What even is that? Oh. Oh, fuck. It's you and Carcat. You must have time traveled without even meaning to when you zapped here. Damn it. You thought you were getting the hang of this. But how do you respond to this absolutely unforeseen turn of events? Alright. I mean... Oh, why am I- why am I saving? This is the fucking first one. <clears throat> death. Death. Don't fuck with time. Open. Open. Okay, everyone seems to want open, which is, I'm assuming, death. Open the door. You spring up to answer the door, because that's what any good guest would do while their host is busy fighting a pie. You honk your way over, making more music on the way. Miracles, or whatever. You wonder what you're going to say when you see yourself. You'll probably be pretty surprised. Up close, the door is sort of warm? Not temperature-wise, more in an existential way. A narrative weight hangs around this door. When you touch it, tingling heat shoots up your fingers. Oh. Man. This door is great. You don't want anything more than to open this door. Shit, you love this door. I just love doors in general, actually. Fucking amazing. You love to open them up and be in one place and then walk through them and be in another. You twist the handle. You are forcibly returned to the start screen. All right. <laughs> you know, as a time player, I knew that wouldn't work, but, you know. That's why I knew that was the death end. All right. Well, there's your instant death. I think that's our first instant death yet. Like, our first go about, our first instant death. Like, first try. All righty. Oh, the honking is just nuts. Let's let Gamzee open the door. Honk. Figuring this is the best way to prevent a paradox, you wait until the racket gets loud enough to alert your host. What's all that? You shrug and open your eyes real wide to show how innocent you are. This is a total mystery that absolutely needs solving. Oh, hey, hold up, brother. I'm hearing something in the scrub copy. Some squeak beast, what's all got itself trapped? The noise in the closet breaks off just as Gamzee throws open the door. Yep, same place as before. Other you and Karkat must be shouting at each other back at his hive. Well, he'll be doing most of the shouting. It really is a mess in there, shit. Damn, little monster skittered off. Yeah, weird. You have no idea where they went. You're totally sure it was not a friend of his who flipped out at the sheer sound of his voice. That would be ridiculous. Oh, no doubt. That baby face is just so adorable. Look at that. Like, Gamzee fucking scares me, but look at that face, dude. It's adorable. I mean, Gamzee was always sort of batshit, but this was before he snapped. It's a little sad, actually. 
It's a little sad. Maybe in this universe he won't go crazy. That would be nice. You're glad you agreed about that. Oh, and speaking of which, you mentioned that you have a friend in common. Carcat. Small? Shouty? Gamzee cracks into such a wide grin, you're surprised his face doesn't turn inside out. Yeah, that there's my best fucking friend! As close as two wrigglers what slithered out of Mother Grub's frumpy ass together. We get our rap on. Rap? Like, actual rap? Carcat doesn't actually strike you as the rapping type. Not much as not so much as you'd notice. But I do know he's got that music inside him somewhere. All wrapped up under his skin, just waiting for a real motherfucking brother to rip it out. Aw. That's incredibly romantic, but also absolutely the creepiest shit you've ever heard. Aw hell yes. An ungodly amount of steam issues from the kitchen. Mmm. Ah. Oh, no, that's, uh, steam. Steam from the steamed pie we're having. Mmm, steamed pie. Nah. Why is there smoke coming from your kitchen, Gamzee? You know, this pie tastes... Similar to the ones they have at Grub Burger. Oh no, old Makar recipe. For steam pies. Yes. Okay, we're done. An ungodly amount of steam issues from the kitchen like someone baking in a cartoon. Whatever it is smells amazing, sugary with just a hint of sharpness to it. Did Gamzy ever say what kind of pie he's making? <laughs> Fucking Aurora Borealis, brother. Miracle pie, sister. Miracle pie. Oh, nice. Miracle flavor. Sounds great, and not at all like it might burn the roof of your mouth off. There it is. A smile. Gams emerges from the kitchen, the sweet smell getting stronger as he comes closer. He isn't carrying any plates or forks or whatever, so you guess you're just gonna eat with your hands? You look down at your grubby little paws. When's the last time you washed these silly things? You're disgusting. But then you get a look at the pie and realize that germs are really going to be the last of your worries. It's thick and gelatinous and green. Neon green. Poison control green. Like clip art of something toxic. You're absolutely sure that whatever that pie is made of, humans are not meant to eat it. Probably not trolls either. Gamzee sits down next to you, stretching out his long, skinny legs onto the coffee table, knocking over a stack of comics and a couple empty Fago bottles. Yikes. This does not make you feel any better about his ability to make good nutritional choices. You ask Gamzee, as politely as you're able, what kind of pie it is. Oh, you're right! There is a rage symbol in it. Shit. Oh, dang, brother. Nutri- <laughs> What the fuck is that? Nutrition. Nutrition mercenary. Fuck you. Miracles. Oh, dang, brother. A nutrition mercenary never gives away his secret ingredients. All you need to know is this. The good shit. If you want to see the miracles the way I see them, I know you do. I can hear it in your voice. I can see it in your stars. This is the shit that's going to put you all the way over the top. Gamzee gives you that one look. You know the one. When your friend tells you they got some deliriously dank shit and they're ready, they're aching to share it with you. That's a real thing that happens. It absolutely, it's absolutely drugs. This is a drug pie. All right, guys, we're on page two, baby. What is Q? Quick saves. Oh, oh, there's auto saves. I didn't know that. We're on page two of the saves now. Everyone really wants me to eat the drug pie. All right, I'm gonna eat the drug pie. You know what? Fuck it. 
You're magic. You can do whatever you want. You scoop out a big green glowing glob of poison pie. It's so gooey and thick it almost slides right out of your hand. You manage to get a little bit of it into your mouth. It punches you right in the taste buds. So sweet your teeth ache. And without any discernible texture. Just goop that slowly fills your mouth and coats your throat. Wow, this sure is a tactile experience. It doesn't taste bad. Just sort of like you swallowed a big sweet mouthful of... Nausea hits you in a wave and every nerve ratchets tight. Yep, this is definitely not meant for whatever kind of creature you are. Your body wants to reject it. You lean over the arm of the couch and prepare to give this volume an additional content warning. But the feeling passes. And not only does it pass, it's accompanied by a rising sweep of euphoria. It shivers up from your stomach and into your brainstem. You let out an unintentional sigh of happiness and settle back down into the couch. Wow, you feel so great right now. Holy shit, drugs are awesome! You want to do them all the time. No wonder Gamzee was so intent on getting this pie finished. If you were him and you knew the secret to the wonders of the universe, you wouldn't eat anything else, ever. A long finger taps you on the shoulder. More, motherfucker? He offers you the pie plate, and you eagerly dig your fingers in. It's getting all over the couch in your face, but you don't care. You just want more of that perfect, contented feeling. Gamzee watches you with dreamy approval. Somehow the two of you end up in the supply closet. You aren't really sure why. It just felt like a good idea to go in there. Possibly to investigate whatever it was that was making a bunch of silly noise just a few minutes ago. Oh! You know what that- what it was? It was you! You and Carcat! You guys came to visit Gamzee one time, but Carcat wussed out. You'll try harder next time. Haha! <laughs> Good try, motherfucker! You're not pulling my stun that easy. My nubby little brother hasn't been anywhere near my motherfucking hive. I've tried to get him over here again and again, you know. But he's all got this hate on for face-to-face -face hangouts. Not like you. You got your motherfucking pan blown right the fuck open. You're like my sister. You're wide open to the motherfucking miracles. You tell Gamzee that he's totally right. You're ready and open to whatever miracles come along. But no, seriously. If he wanted the two of you to go visit Carcat right now. If he wanted the two of you to go visit Carcat right now. He's probably sleeping off his trip to an alien planet. But you could wait. Or just zap forward in time a little bit. That's the thing you can do. Oh, for real? Why didn't you say so then, motherfucker? Zap us out of here. Sure, right away. Anything you want, best friend. Games that gives you another of those wide, messy grins. Like, he can't contain his joy at the thought of being someone's best friend. You totally sympathize. You can't actually remember how to use your magic powers right now. You think it's possible you're a little too high. You don't even remember how you came to be lying on this filthy closet floor and looking up at the filthy closet ceiling. Shouldn't you try to keep the place with your cleaning supplies a little, you know, cleaner? No worries, my brother. There isn't any rush. I got my certainty on that one day we're going to get together in one big horn pile. My boy Carcat, T-Dog, Equius, that nasty Cerulean bitch who's always mad as hell. Everybody. We'll all climb up to the clouds together. <laughs> you don't know who some of these people are, but that's okay. You're confident that they'd all make amazing friends. You can't wait to climb up into the sky with them. What do you do once you get up there? We ride the dark carnival all the way to paradise, my brother. The dark carnival? That sounds familiar. It's my favorite Left 4 Dead 2 campaign. I feel like you've heard of it before. Oh, I should hope so, motherfucker. Anybody what's got any kind of head for religious dogma all that's heard of this shit. I knew you were a real one. Oh yeah, for sure. You're the realist, but like, imagine you weren't as real as you could be. What would you tell some dumb asshole who had no idea what games he was talking about? The dark carnival's where the path leads, my brother. Back in the old days, the bright just got their blood poured out when their time came. All that purple painting in the ringmaster circle. But nowadays, it's more like a metaphor and shit. When the motherfucker dies, his soul is all ruptured up from his corpse meat, right? And that soul's got to go up and go somewhere, don't it? 
It's not about just float around untethered. So it rides up to the carnival where it gets all right to properly judge. To see whether it's been a good bitch or a naughty motherfucker. Anyways, that's how miracles work. For people who somehow don't know who the Cerulean bitch is. Who the fuck wouldn't know who the Cerulean- It's Vriska, guys. Jesus. Right, right. God, that sounds amazing. You really hope Gamzy gets there one day. Something jagged slams up against the haze of drugged contentment. You feel like a booming knock on the inside of your consciousness. You remember a face. Gamzy's face. No, not quite. I was taking a drink! Fuck you! It's a face with makeup, but it's younger, kinder, more vulnerable. You remember this? This is a friend. You remember you had friends. You remember a clown. With a monumental effort, you force yourself into a sitting position. Gamzee is still splayed out on the floor, totally gone. You have to figure this out. For anyone who missed it, Karako showed up for just a split second. For a split second. Oh, for a split second. You had it. You shake your head, trying to clear it. You stagger up. Gamzee makes a sleepy noise and rolls on his side. Stagger back into the living room, feeling your way across the wall until you find an abolition trap. You locate the sink and splash some water in your face, trying to focus enough to concentrate, but not enough to lose this thread. Somehow, you know if you become too aware of yourself, you're going to completely forget everything again. It's almost like someone wants you to forget. Forget all your friends and your past adventures. You close your eyes and pictures that friendly clown face. A name drifts across your mind, almost close enough to snatch. Oh! Zap. All of your other trips through the narrative have been instantaneous. One second you're in a place, the next you're in another. This time the air feels warm and gelatinous, like trying to run while waist deep in water. The drug pie you could uh, could be just fucking with your powers, but you know in the core of you that isn't right. You are where you're not supposed to be, but something here knows you're trespassing. Something here is awake and it sees you. What? Cool run animation. Your body goes through a series of shivers, not unlike when you first tasted the pie. Some distant layer of you knows that what's ever is... Oh my god. Some distant layer of you knows that's what whatever you are experiencing is wrong and not meant to be seen by anyone. As if somehow you've gotten a glimpse into the subatomic level. Your vision stretches out in a long, empty corridor. At the other end is... uh. What was that? What the fuck was that? That was like a Half-Life 2 fucking... That was like a fucking Half-Life 2 Kleiner. That was like a T-posing Half-Life 2 Kleiner. Hold on. Hold on, I need to get... For comparison, I need to get a picture of fucking T-pose Half-Life 2. Hold on. Let me see if I can make heads or tails of this. Oh my god! Oh my god! Hold on. Copy and replace. Look! Look! Look, that's what it looked like! It looked like a Half-Life 2 T-Pose! Holy shit! Holy shit. That's what it was! It was it was literally like a, a Half-Life 2 T-Pose. What the fuck was that? Half-Life 3 confirmed! Oh my god, that was so weird. Alright, you slingshot back to Gamzee's hive, hitting the floor with what feels like every inch of your body. God, how can you- what if it was just G-Man? What if G-Man shows up in one of the ends and it's just- Rise and shine, Mr. Freeman. Rise and shine. Slingshot back to Gamzee's hive, hitting the floor with what feels like every inch of your body. 
God, how can you fall on your ass and your head at the same time? How is that legal? Even worse, you appear to have sobered up much faster than you have any right to. The high is broken like a fever and you're sweating through your trendy collared shirt. You turn. Gamzee has somehow moved himself to the couch while you were doing whatever it was? Also, collared shirt? What happened to the hoodie? Where is it? Trying to throw yourself into part of the narrative you don't have permissions to see. He looks significantly less stoned than before, too. What'd you go at, motherfucker? Oh, uh, you just tried to pop in to visit someone? Someone you thought you remembered from your past, and it went wrong. Somehow you were just getting an image of a T-posing figure, which is absolutely absurd. Damn. You have Dave's shirt on. Oh. Yeah, D Dave's bro. We have bro's shirt on. I forgot about that. That's some deep nonsense right there. Some righteous fucking noise. Yeah, you guess so. Probably just the drugs, though. Gamzee looks at you through slitted, hazy eyes. You realize that trying to explain anything to him when he's in this state isn't going to do any good. Just a fever dream. And that's probably exactly what it was. Shit. Maybe this is what the kids refer to as a bad trip. Is this what Gamzee does? Just sits in his hive all day and gets high? Well, that's a perfectly respectable way to deal with a hell place like Alternia, but... God. Makes you sad. All these kids you've met so far are incredibly sad. There. Now when you went and bummed yourself out. You're exhausted. You really aren't above doing the least amount of work for the highest possible reward here. You shrug and tell him that you probably what you experienced was a miracle. Gamzee's uh, beatific smile makes it all the better. Yay! Kind of yay. Kind of yay. That kind of looks like a Wizzo. Tommy. A Wizzo Tommy. A Wizzo Gamzee. Like, his hair doesn't make it, like, better. His hair makes it worse, if anything. Oh my god, look at that. Perp, you got it, like, right on the money. <laughs> Alright, who's that? I was waiting for the bad ending. It's coming. Oh, who said earlier? Someone in the... <laughs> someone in the chat... Someone in the Discord said, Oh, hi, Kark. And it made me laugh a lot. Alright. Time for the... Time for the good old bad end. What's this? Oh, you re-added the... You added the horns. You forgot to add his horns. I wasn't gonna mention that. Fuck are you bastard. Ha <laughs> ha. Alright. Dare to resist drugs and alcohol. You take a deep breath and prepare to stand up to peer pressure. You tell Gamzee that you think you'll pass on the pie. Whoa, for real? Nobody's ever turned down a bite before. Really? How many people has he offered it to? Gamzee grins. Well, it's motherfucker, you got me there. No fear, brother, no fear. But you gotta be doing what you're feeling. No way I'm about the harsh of brother's flow when it comes to all their personal preferences or whatever. Oh, thank God. He isn't going to think you're uncool for not doing his drug pie. You can't exactly recall where you picked up the idea that Alternian drugs are not a good idea, but you're pretty sure it's right. Maybe just a good general rule of thumb. Avoid alien-controlled substances. Or possibly all alien substances. Maybe it would be bad for you even if it wasn't a drug pie. Your internal anatomy is still a mystery to you. Actually, Gamzee is taking this so well that you feel emboldened to go further. Push a little harder. Man, you really are getting brazen with this after-school special shit. You suggest Gamzee that maybe, just maybe, he shouldn't eat the pie either. He raises both eyebrows and gives you a slow blink, looking from the pie to you and back again. He looks absolutely flabbergasted at the idea. Hasn't anyone ever mentioned to him that he should be careful what he eats? Not even Carcat? Carcat absolutely seems like the kind of guy to want to micromanage his friends' lives. Might have said a thing or two. Once or maybe two times. Does Gamzee ever think about following his good friend's advice? Gamzee free- Oh. 
Yikes. I saw that. I saw that for just a second. Gamzee freezes with one long-fingered hand reaching for the pie. You can practically see the gears turning in his head. Uh, in his pan. Head. In his head. You catch another flicker on that flat, effectless menace behind his eyes. Then he splits into another big sloppy grin. Fuck it. Gamzee rises eerily to his feet like he's on marionette strings, almost without bending his knees. Picking up the pie, he shuffles across the rumpus block and opens the window. He makes and holds eye contact as he throws uh, the pie out the window. Oh, uh, okay. Well, that's one way to get rid of it, but what about the pie plate? More where that came from. Anything I want, I just enter into the computer and it appears outside the hive a couple hours later. Fucking miracles, man. Or maybe just same day delivery? Is there a troll Amazon? Gamzu lets out a creaky laugh. It makes you a little nervous. You can't quite pinpoint why. Slow down, brother. You're talking all the deep motherfucking heiresses today. Heresies today. Turning down a perfectly good pie. What could have gotten us all well and truly seeing the glories? What's the Messiah put on this planet? Don't take my away my miracles, too. Oh, there's that look. Well, you didn't make him throw the pie out the window. You just made a suggestion. He didn't have to listen to you. No, no, you you got the right of it. We'll do it your way. Never know. The old goat might have come home for once. And he never likes it when I fly high on pie. Well, if he's sure. Okay, all right. Let me just, uh, that might be a good thumbnail for the episode. Hmm, terrifying. Well, if he's sure, Gamzee looks at you from across the room, silhouetted against the window like a black spot on the moon. And you think you may have made a mistake. You aren't exactly sure why, you just, something in the back of your head is shouting at you. Maybe you'll check, just to be sure. So when Gamzee lopes back into the kitchen, maybe to throw more shit passive-aggressively out the window, you zap forward just a little while, a couple of days. The house is quiet, but everything looks mostly the same. When you listen, though, you hear a steady thump, thump, thump. If you didn't know better, you might say it was someone banging something against drywall. For instance, their head. The sound rattles through the stone of the hive and builds along the scaffolding of your body. Oh. Okay. With mounting dread, you zap forward a few days. The hive is a wreck. It wasn't exactly a showroom before, but now there are three times as many hawk horns and fago bottles overflow off the table. The couch bleeds stuffing from three long gouges. The TV is shattered, and every mirror in the house is broken. Every shiny surface slashed past recognition. It's like someone didn't want to see themselves. Gamzee? Oh god, what happened? Oh! Okay. Okay. All right. Why'd they cancel the test, Doodles? Uh, but more, but more to the fact, I think he killed Car Cat. You zap the Car Cat's hive. He knows Gamzee. He'll be able to tell you. Oh God, red. Red everywhere. I need to eat a full plate of eggs in 10 minutes and I can get. Oh. It's on Cargat's bedroom walls, the floor, even arching up the ceiling. Arching up the ceiling. Cargat's red, red blood. You never got a chance to talk to him about it. Your stomach curls in on itself and you fall forward onto your knees, retching onto the carpet. Yeah, I haven't had any of the pie, so nothing comes up. Okay! Oh, she fought. Shit. Kanai's room is far greater disarray. She looks like she put up more of a fight than Karkat had. There are great gouts of jade blood over the bolts of cloth and drafting table, but it's joined by deep splashes of royal purple. Kanai's hustop glows sickly in the dim room. 
a smiley face with a round claw nose has been painted the blood on the screen beneath it as an instant message flashes. Fussy Fangs, what the fuck? You can't ignore me forever, Miriam. I doubt you can't even do it for one night. Honk. Huh? Honk, honk. The cursor flashes, green and purple ooze on the keys, still wet. Oh, God. He's gone after AG, too. You have to do something. You peer in a tall stone room. You've never actually been here before. Maybe you have. Maybe you've already made good friends with this particular troll. It really depends on which option you chose at the beginning of the volume. God, why did you think that? Why isn't your brain working? What the fuck is wrong with you? You feel like you know all of this, but not. Like you watched it happen to somebody else. From the distance, you hear a telltale honk. Ice sheets up your spine. Honk. That is the most cursed noise you've ever heard in your life. Jesus fuck, you are going to have nightmares filled with brass instrumentation provided you don't die immediately. Honk! Oh! Oh. Okay. Okay. He's got the scratches. Did he fight Nepeta? Hey there, motherfucker. You're late. <laughs> this is an evil, evil Tommy voice. Oh, hey, Gamzee. You sure, uh, look totally fucked up. Green and crimson paint his shirt, splashed up his arms to his elbows. It's like fucking Christmas up in here. Three deep purple gouges intersect his face, still bleeding freely. Shit, dude. You should have kept doing your drugs if this was the alternative. Talk about an overreaction. Overreaction? It's no fucking reaction, little aberrant speck of worm meat. This is the true God's judgment. Ah! He came to me, motherfucker. He spoke the words of my ears. He's the only one who's ever bothered to motherfucking truths to me. Ah! Who came to him? Who was speaking truths? Don't worry. You'll meet him soon. Ha 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 ha. Honk. Honk honk. Honk honk honk. Honk 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 honk. Oh god. Honk honk honk. I hope you guys enjoyed my... <laughs> rendition of Tommy Wiseau. I tried to do more of a end of the room Tommy at the end. Tried to do a more of a Tommy freaking out and knocking shit off the shelves Tommy. Oh! Oh! <laughs> Please send this video to Tommy. Wait, you don't have jerk shirt. You're right. Listen, I don't think the I don't think the artists really I mean what is canon anymore? Jesus. Oh The shirt's underneath the hoodie. He's like fashioning. He's like fa he's like fashion. He's wearing Dirk's shirt underneath the hoodie. Oh my god, he's like a fashion boy now. Well, that was Gam. That was Gam. I hope you enjoyed the Tommy voice. I'm glad you guys got to witness that. That was, uh, that was fun. I hope Gamzy shows up again so I can do it again. I love doing the Tommy voice. It's hysterical. Yeah, let me check these warnings, actually. Uh, this might be spoilers, come to think of it. Hold on, why don't I skim this? Uh, so you guys don't have to. I'll read you anything important. Just in case if there's spoilers. Oh, no, there's no spoilers. Uh, what? Wow. Wow! The um. What the fuck? 
Um. Um. I don't know what to say. It says Vor. Does say Vor on it. Wow. That's a lot. What do you mean, finally? Shut the fuck up, perp. Cannibalism, mind control, arachnids and insects, in detail, vor, gore, death, parental mistreatment, gender and identity discomfort, strangulation, dyspraxia, stimming, United States politics historical, panic attacks. I hate this, I hate this one already. I hate this one already. All right, there's your warnings. I guess I'll have to read these warnings uh, before we go. I, I didn't even think about that. Here, let's see. Uh, none for John. Alcoholism, underage drinking, neglectful parenting, yep. Abusive guardian, yep. Abandonment, neglectful parenting, abusive guardian, animal abuse. You seeing a pattern here? Seeing, you seeing a... Uh... Seeing a pattern here between these three, and then John's got nothing. John's got nothing, because his dad actually loved him. Suggested themes, parental death, suicide mention. Blood. Kanaya's only got blood. What about her shitty relationship with uh, uh, Vriska? Jesus, Vriska is bad. Okay. Well, you've been warned, I suppose. Uh, trigger warning, all of that. You know what? I'm going to go uh, get a drink, and then we'll be right back with Vriska's Root. So, uh, stick around. Oh my god, there's a lot. There's a lot happening here. I forgot I was fucking sharing. Okay, BRB. Sorry, I had to go pray to some god that doesn't exist about uh, the fact that I don't want Vor to be in this. Some non-existent god. The Homestuck god, maybe. Please don't let the Vor warning be real. Christ almighty. Alright, here we go. I'm fine with everything else. Jesus. Your latest narrative jaunt has taken you walking down an Alternian shore. The two moons light up this beach cove in shades of pink and lime green, the reflections playing at the shimmering patterns in the gentle waves. It would be beautiful, if not for the haggard, monstrous gulls picking the flesh from the dead, and the pungently rotting fish, crabs, and even one of their own. Is, is that the cannibalism? <laughs> There's your cannibalism. You keep your distance as they eye you warily gore on their chipped beaks. These are not potential friends. Why not? Everywhere you jump, serendipity seems to guide your hand. But would it be alright to call you fortunate? The night is cool, almost cold. 
You cook a pure white seashell down the beach. It skips gracelessly in the dark gray sand. Stuff. Taking sips here. Taking the fucking sip, babe. You have brought your friends together and just barely begun to master this tremendous and strange new power. But no, you think. You are not fortunate. As you walk alone down the sand that's still radiating stored up heat from the searing day, you feel a pang. Something is missing. You know you've felt this way before, but you can't place one. You have a gulf within your width and breadth of this ocean. An isolation so plain, so true that it seems impassable. Invincible. You step on a weird bug and you don't even care. Weird bug creatures and stuff. This is Mission 2 Zix. Yes, you are filled with a sudden, almost comforting conviction. Nothing you have done in your journey has really made a difference. If you can pick up and put down the lives of these alien weirdos and human weirdos and shake them like an action sketch when things go wrong, rang, when things go wrong, are you really accomplishing anything? Or are you just building shit? <clears throat> oh, sorry. Or are you just building shitty castles in the sand with flimsy plastic implements? Castles that won't mean shit for nothing when the tide rises. You've decided. You're a creature of solitude. You are a rock. You're an island. From now on, you walk alone. <laughs> yeah, it's clearly my fault. There's an angled figure crouched with terrible posture in a dock ahead. Sure. That figure may be sitting next to an intriguing-looking moored ship, yes. But surely one glimpse of a potential life to meddle in won't immediately make you fall off the wagon. Back to a life of in... in... Itinerant? Itinerant? Itinerant friendship, right? Oh, sweet, a new friend. I'm gonna call it... Pirate music? Or... Will we have to sit through Megalovania this entire fucking arc? Oh, I know this music. It's other Megalovania. This is the other Megalovania one. I crank up the tunes for a second here. This is this is basically other Megalovania. This is a Toby one, right? I'm pretty sure this is a Toby one. This song essentially is Megalovania 2, in fairness. It's just as iconic. This played during one of the flashes, I remember. <laughs> God damn it. You amble over to the girl hunched on the dock like a stupid Thembo friend. <laughs> Thembo! Thembo! <laughs> you amble over to the girl hunched on the dock like the stupid Thembo friend slut you are, doing an acrobatic fucking pirouette off the wagon. She hasn't seen you yet, so you watch her like a creep. She's leaning over a complicated pile of papers, erasing boxes and filling them in again. Every once in a while, she pauses to roll various dice. As soon as you take one step on the wooden deck, she looks up and jumps with a feline quickness into a standing position, looking immediately ready for fight. Whoa! What are you? You raise your hands in a pathetic sort of innocent and weak motion, which for you is basically any motion. No, Thembo is supposed to be like Bimbo for a girl and Himbo for a guy, and now Thembo is for, you know, them. That's great. That's quality. Thembo's quality. Wait a second. You're that weirdo that was bothering Kanaya, aren't you? Gender neutral bow. Yeah, exactly. Yep. You're exactly that weirdo, and now you're here saying hello to a new stranger and maybe make a new friend. Isn't that great? Great. Just what I needed. More meddling. I know I'm the coolest, but I'm kind of busy right now. Big campaign tonight. Dude, you are so good at campaigns, you tell her. You're all about hope and change. You helped Al Gorch hang it. 
What? Uh, okay. Oh. <laughs> hanging Chad. It's a Hanging Chad joke. This is so stupid. This is the history thing. This was the U.S. politics history thing they were talking about. This is so dumb. You helped Al Gore hang a Chad. Tip a canoe and Tyler, too. What even the fuck are you saying? Don't call me dude, or anything else for that matter. Uh, you mean you're down to help? Maybe be our campaign manager? Ha! <laughs> I'm the captain here, buddy. D can you believe people didn't like the sprite? Fuck them. Hey! If you're watching this video later on YouTube, and you didn't like this sprite, GET FUCKED! But, as it happened, I'm currently all out of first mates. Wanna be a swabby? Oh, it's like a boat thing. Yes? That's why there's a boat there. What are all the papers on the ground for? The campaign, dumbass! They're the characters. Look at that! Look at that! That's so good! She's got like a full metal alchemist arm. Sorry, that's gonna be the thumbnail for sure. Um, they're the character sheets for me, the greatest petticoat sea griff to ever sail the eight seas. One of our friends was raised in a cave and she still knows what Flarp is. See, they're mentioning, they're mentioning her. They're mentioning her. Who have they mentioned? Who they mentioned? They've mentioned Tavros, and they've mentioned Nepeta. That means Nepeta and Tavros are next. Shit. Nepeta and Tavros are next, guys. Fuck, I can't wait for Nep. Oh, I can't wait for Nep. Oh, I love Nepeta. I'm not, like... I, I, we have to get the good end, and then I might not actually do the bad end for Nepeta. Alright. One of our friends was raised in a cave, and she still knows what Flarp is. Well, you can zap over to the cave and ask her, then. Her look of indifference is immediately replaced with the tilt of her head, as though you have a threat to leave has caught her attention. Ew. Not unless you want to smell like cat piss for weeks and get high off secondhand nip. Is Kanaya? Not Kanaya. Is Nepeta a stoner? Is this, can is this canon now? A Nepa stoner? Look, it's simple. Pick a name and roll up some stats. For example, I'm Marquis Spinneret Mindfang. I'm the scourge of the seven high sea the high seas is an undefeated champion of naval flarp. My colors on the horizon turn even high bloods into sniveling cowards. She smoked catnip 100%. You say that sounds really cool. You aren't troll names, but aren't troll names six letters long? You mean, you've only met a couple before this, but for some reason you have really strong sense of the rules here. I'm in character here. Try to keep up. You guess that explains the outfit. She seems really into this. Maybe weirdly into this. It's all a bit intense. Isn't this just a game? Flarp is more than just a game, and I'm the best there is. How about this? If you agree to make a character and sail with me, I'll tell you my real name. You look at her elaborate costume over at her ship and decide, why the hell not? You've already made your friend bed. You might have to sleep in it. You Now you have to sleep in it. Not that you're going to sleep or anything. That would be patently ridiculous. Oh my god. It's the Flarp sheet. Oh my god, guys. We're looking at a Flarp player's handbook for the first time, guys. It's a real Flarp player's handbook. Canon. Canon Flarping information. Stat bat. <laughs> Stat bat. Okay, let's walk you through that. Let's walk you through this. You should be flattered that a master gamer like me is giving you the full tutorial. I have read the books myself with no help. The first thing you do is roll values for each of the ten dice rostra. Simple, right? She pops a huge bag of dice out of her Silidex and starts handing you groups at a time. 
You roll 2d4 for Dice Rostrum. Thrones of the Empress and get two ones. You roll 6d6 for Dice Rostrum. Conduct your standard. Six fucking snake eyes stare up at you from the wood of the dock. Wow, you're really bad at this. I think she's using her luck powers. Vriska gets all the luck, you know. Take the insult lying down. Oh my god, am I not going to have options this arc? Am I not going to have options because Vriska's just that bitch? 100% that bitch. You gotta hand it to her. When she's right, she's right. And she's right. So she's right. You finished all 26 dice rolls required for this game. I just realized! I just realized! I was thinking of all the trolls earlier, and I was like, wow, we're really getting somewhere, aren't we? I was trying to think of all the trolls. I was like, Nepeta, Tavros, Aradia, Solix, we haven't done, uh, Eridan, and Feferi. And then I was like, and that's it. And Equius, of course. I forgot about Terezi! We've skipped Terezi. We have not done Terezi. The most important Homestuck character ever. I don't know. Oh my god. What the fuck are we doing Terezi, dude? I want Terezi arc, please. You finished all 26 die dice rolls required for this game and you've gotten the lowest in each one. What rotten luck. I have never... Well, yeah, not scientifically. Um, I have never seen anyone roll this low before. I didn't even know you could get a zero. It's okay. We can save this by putting the stats in the right place. <clears throat> You're the teal one on the server, how could you? Yeah, teal is my favorite color. She flips to another page of the player's handbook that shows you attributes of Flarp. For some reason, you can read them, despite having just arrived on this planet for the first time. She flips to another page of the player's handbook and shows you the attributes of Flarp. For some re- What? Hold on. Didn't I just read that? I'm a dumb fuck. I pressed space and it did not skip. Wait. There we go. So your vim, grit, pultritude, and grace combine with real-life vitals to make your HP. Oh, just added the right. Whoops. Yeah, that was my bad. Problem sleuth. What about problem sleuth? Wait, was there a problem sleuth reference? Yeah, is it? Oh my god. It is problem sleuth. Real life vitals. Your body is weak and shitty. Is this some kind of hardcore game? The most dangerous game? If you die in this game, do you die in real life? Yeah. I haven't read fucking Problem Sleuth in forever. That would be a good read on stream. Reading through Problem Sleuth again. Uh, yeah? You didn't know? The sheer combined shock of what you didn't- what you don't know could kill an elephant quicker than Thomas Edison trying to discredit an immigrant. You get to roll again when you level up, so you won't be pathetic forever. I mean, if you survive. But with a scourge like me at your side, you're on easy street. I'm jealous of you, really. You gulp and nod. Okay, let's finish this. The Marquise grins. Her lipstick smears a bit where her fangs jut out. You think that's just how it is for trolls wearing lipstick, but Kanaya's was perfect. She pulls an eight ball out of her pocket and smashes it, suddenly and violently on the dock. You jump at the noise. She looks at you pitifully and then decides not to make fun of you. Out of the wrecked plastic sophistic, uh, sophistic sphere, a gross fucking grubby worm appears. It's like the size of a wiener dog, and it's wriggling. You see that it's pulsating. Covered in the blue-tinted family recreation water once inside an eight ball, the grub's swollen ovipositor glistens. It extends to deposit a massive brood of eggs. Ew! Each glowing in the center is slowly pulsating LED light. This is so fucking gross. You look away and dry heave a bit, leaning off the dock. So far, this game sucks ass. Jeeg. That's a... You gotta be fucking kidding me. You gotta be fucking kidding me with Jeeg. Come on! 
Come on! Jesus wouldn't even be a thing at this point. Come on! Don't tell me you've never seen a game grub before. You tell her you have never seen a game grub before. Also, maybe you should give a CW before she makes you uh, watch a thing that includes a glistening ovipositor. What? Ah, oh, shit. Yeah, that was pretty gross. Here. You bring up the pause menu, click warnings, and give it a read before making an informed de making an informed decision. Have those been there the whole time? They have not. Friska taps her foot impatiently while you fuck around with the game client. For some reason, seeing a full list of content warnings isn't easing your anxiety about what's ahead. It reminds you of something that once made you really angry. In fact, you're especially worried about the gore and death tags. Maybe you should just piece out of this. There's basically no harm whatsoever in yeeting the one, the, yeeting out of this one, and it might save you uh, drowning for good measure. Not the flirtation with dangerous ends is exactly rare for you. Hey, I'm grub. See, I was doing the I was doing the background music before. Alright guys, uh, I mean I think we know what the instant death is here. I'm assuming it's peace out. I'm also going to make a save because that was a long intro sequence before our first real decision. What are we doing here? Are we, uh, are we doing instant death first or what? Okay, we'll peace out first. You know what? You're not feeling up to tabletop gaming today. Close your eyes and feel yourself sink into another narrative. Wait! Your loss. Ah! Ah! <laughs> Why would you make me feel sad like that? Me feel sad about the meanest character. She's sad because nobody wants to fucking hang out with her. Someone should draw MSPA being like, I Briska, I'm about to head out. This is so sad. Damn. That was sad. I didn't like that. I didn't even like Vriskin. I didn't like that. You know what? You're an informed reader and a prepared gamer. You've got this. You ask Grissa what's next. She points to one of the glowing, blinking eggs, which is hatching a pixelated looking bat. The stat bat! Flaps its way into the air with a high-pitched squeak, and starts glowing and projecting a holographic image of a torch. Alright, all you have to do is assign your dice roster to your attribution sconce. What? Pick your best and worst stats. Your top two stats determine your starting class. There's a lot of classes, but I'm already the best one. Alright, well, that seems simple enough. Drag attributes to the dice roster you want to utilize for them. This decision is permanent, so make sure you're satisfied before it's pressing finalize and ensconcing them. You fucker! What is this? You... You fucker! You bastards! Who coded this? <laughs> I don't yeah the adventure zone really okay wow 
Tummy Wonder, Scrappy Doer, Pompous <laughs> Thaumaturge, Petticoat Seagriff, Divine Urchin, Cast Iron Skill Set, Web Minister, Pester Chum, Pep Pepster Chum, Five Finger Filet Fatale, Pluck, Brig Pluck Brigadier, that sounds like a Mission to Six character, Immovable Object, Equine Linebacker, Fortified Legate, Churlish Whirlwind, Ozzy Gourmandius, <laughs> Gap Tooth Ragamuffin, oh my god, Boy Skylark! Fuck yeah, let's go with Boy Skylark. Your two highest attributes are uh, Image and App. Your starting class will be Boy Skylark. Oh my god, you dopey big potential types are all the same. Good luck winning with anything with that pathetic class. A max level Petticoat Seagrift and a level 1 Boy Skylark. Not exactly the meta strat. You're lucky you paired with the number one gamer in Alternia. Before I can carry you to victory, we just need one more thing. There's more of this bullshit? What now? Is a giant sandworm gonna poke its head out of the sand and puke up some more fucking game mechanics that will be described in excruciating narrative detail? Quit being so dramatic. Your character needs a name. Oh, a name. You already have one of those, though. You told Jaded already, but man, you're not feeling as comfortable with it as right now for some reason. Oh? Why is thinking about yourself as a distinct being with an identity and its history feel so uncomfortable? What's wrong with you? Might as well make up a character name. What? Uh, I'm... Okay? I mean, obviously Big's Fujiko's, but... Because that's my, that's my alternative name for everything, dude. The Marquise welcomes you aboard her ship, Big's Fujiko's. As soon as you confirm your name, the other egg starts squelching and cracking into more little flying holographic biotech projectors of various shapes and sizes. Moths and dragonflies and lightning bugs zipping off into the distance. Briska capsulogs all of her various books and character sheets pushes her eye patch glasses up to the bridge of her nose and clambers up the game plank of her ship, which you see has a name painted on the side in Cerulean script as you follow her. Brigantine. Here, hold this. Briska hands you a rope and you hold on to it, keeping the mains rail rolled up as she scurries to and fro, aft and bow, across the deck of the ship, making adjustments. You watch her try to tie a double bowline, but struggle with the dexterity of her mechanical fingers, Swearing in frustration under her breath, you politely look away and try to make idle conversation. You ask for her end of the bargain. What? Yeah, that's what I'm wondering. I'm wondering if they programmed anything in with the the, uh, the stat selection and the names. Hold on, hold up, hold up, hold up. Sorry, we're gonna save. I want to try a couple. I hope you guys don't mind, but I, I want to try a couple, if that's all right with you. We're all saved up. Let's go ahead and uh, go back to the main menu. Just for a second. I want to try a couple. Yeah, I want to try Vriska. That's exactly what I want to try. Sub Transparent Evil. I want to try Sans as well. random we'll save here uh just in case i don't know if this actually changes them trans for short that's fair okay let's see uh i'm a hunger trucker i guess you can distract the opponents max level petticoats sag sea grift and level one hunger trucker All right, here we are. Uh, let's see. Let's get some good ones here. Dock Scratch. Ooh. What? As soon as you say it, Briska narrows her eyes at you. Without warning, she pushes you off the dock into briny Alternian waters. Is it just that, or 
is it Friska? Is it certain? I cannot stress this enough. No fucking doubles. <laughs> oh, she doesn't like it. Terezi. As soon as you say it, Friska. Okay, there are certain names. If you try to name yourself after a pre-existing character other than her. So what happens if we name ourselves Sans? Nope. Nothing. Nothing. No. Hold on. Load. I can be Sans. It'll let me be Sans. Sans Undertale. <laughs> the Marquise welcomes you aboard her ship, Sans Undertale. <laughs> that Friska one was fucking great. Yeah, I guess there's no reason for her to know our data. Huh. Well, that's very funny. Try Andrew. Andrew Hussey. No! <laughs> <laughs> uh, she likes that. Try a dev name. That's not a bad idea. No? No, she's alright with that. That's very funny. That's, yeah, she doesn't know the kids. It's just her friends. Her friends, probably, and people she knows. Which is funny that she knows Doc Scratch. Lord English? Nah, she, uh, she's fine with that. Did I? Did I misspell John? Oh, well. It probably wouldn't it probably would have let me do it anyways. Any more? Any more suggestions? Tavros. Well, Tavros should just throw me off. Try John again. It won't work, I'm telling you. Whether I spell it correctly or not, it won't work. I almost typed John Homestuck. Yeah, she doesn't know. Tavros. Oh! <laughs> no, 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 no. Gotta pick a name less wimpy than that. <laughs> Can you be a little more creative? Jeez. So there's certain names that get her going. She wouldn't let me do Terezi. She wouldn't let me do Doc Scratch. She probably won't let me do Car Cat. No, she doesn't like that. There are certain characters she just... Aridin? The Fairy. Kanaya. Terezi. <laughs> <laughs> wow. All right, we'll head back to the game now. Well, that was that was an interesting experiment. That was fun. Homestuck. Someone suggested I enter Homestuck. <laughs> <laughs> Terezi.
Did I spell that right? I spelled that right, right? That was very funny. Oh, I saved a screenshot somehow. I didn't even know that was possible. She did not like me typing Terezi. June. Vris, yeah, Vris Rezi. Oh yeah, I forgot I could just go back. What a dumbass. June. Nope, nothing. All right, I think we should uh, we should head back. We should head back now. That was a, a fun little experiment. No, 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 no. Load. Got it. Let's go. Her name. You made a character. She tells you her name. That's the deal. She secures another rigging and stomps back over to you. Hmm. You haven't really made a character until you're in costume. Is your fit not already fresh? Perhaps even the freshest? Here. She dumps an extra outfit out of her inventory, looking almost exactly like an earlier version of hers. Smaller, with more amateur stitching. Oh, I didn't try Aradia. Aradia would probably get us the same result. Yeah, we typed Terezi. She didn't like that. You put on the big bridge coat and feel super badass. She looks at you, tilts her head to evaluate, and then grabs a jaunty hat, feather and all, from her Silidex and pops it on your head. Nice. All right, my name's Vriska. Vriska Circuit, don't you forget it. Vriska Circuit, or the Marquise, satisfied with her preparations, snatches the rope from you and lets it go, unfurling the main sail. She practically skips to the captain's wheel, ready to steal the brigantine out of the harbor. Real name, uh, real name basis is one step closer to friendship. Though for a moment you feel like you got told that name already? Your brain is messed up even without remembering stuff that maybe didn't happen in canon. If canon is even really a thing that means something anymore. Your unsettling metatextual introspection is interrupted by Briska shouting. Roll for initiative! You hear the buzz of projector bugs boarding your ship. And soon four flickering holograms appear on the main deck looking like lurching zombie trolls. You already hear dice rattling on the deck. You look over to her cheat. You look over at her to cheat and figure out what you need to roll. Alright, I'm starting with an 18. Looks like you gotta subtract the modifier. 19! Huh. Guess you go first, big Fujikos. This is it. It's LARPing time. You look down at the piece of paper with your abilities on it, ready to cast Magic Missile or Bugsby's Grasping Hand or some shit. You, cra you pick the top attack on the list. It's your special class ability. You channel the spirit of Boy Skylark, point straight at one of the holographic zombies, and yell your casting Tunkle Toad Murder Whimsy. You grab a d20 and blow on it with one hand. Your lady luck, no snake eyes. Other gambling terms, whatever. You let the inco you let the icosahedrian of the tabletop destiny drop through the air, awaiting the result with bated breath. You got a two and miss. God damn it. Briska laughs out loud. Check out how a real gamer does it! There you go, guys. There you go, guys. Are you happy? Take your fucking screenshots. Take your fucking screenshots! She's a gamer. She's a gamer, guys. Abaca, fuck you. Zone of truth. Uh, Magnus rushes, rushes in and all that. Then she shows you how a real gamer does it. Over the course of this and the next four holographic encounters of balloony complexity, tediousness, difficulty, and word count, she just rolls so many goddamn dice and keeps track of so many goddamn stats. <clears throat> You're overwhelmed, bewildered, and tired of doing math in pencil by the time the last squid-themed hollow monster dies. You were worried about the danger of this game before, but it seems like the only way you're gonna die today is from fucking boredom. Then you spot it. A schooner. A schooner? I always wondered about that word. Painted all in black emerges from the fog. You shout to Vriska that there's a ship on the port horizon. Vriska looks... right? Does she not know the difference between port and starboard? Huh. You point in the proper direction. She gives you that mischievous grin of hers. 
Now it's time for some real action. We've entered the PvP enabled zone. She puts aside her character sheet and dice, drawing a blue saber. She holds it in one hand, the ship's wheel in the other. That's the Rue. The ship of the Dreadclaw Ophelia. Top of the naval flarp leaderboards. She's got a whole crew in that boat. But she's just another rich sea dweller with a hired help, and she's been too scared to face me. <clears throat> Sorry. Sorry I could clear my throat, guys. I, uh, I've been doing a lot of reading here. Real gamers, guys. <laughs> I thought Sea Dwellers were rare. Briska's pointed your ship straight at the Rue, and you've picked up speed. You can make out a troll girl with finned ears and gaudy purple outfit that you describe as a sexy pirate Halloween costume from the world's most bougie party city, Dreadclaw Ophelia. It's absolutely garish compared to Vriska's more normcore approach to RP active wear, but dressed much more humbly than a captain or a bunch of lowbloods standing behind her, clutching shitty rusty swords and shaking. So let's bring the fight to her! You're not slowing down. You're pointing straight at the enemy hull. Vriska steers your ship directly into the well-appointed schooner. <laughs> Still can't get that word right. And you struggle to keep your feet at the shock of the impact which knocks the vial of blood in her frightened thralls to the deck of the roof. She yells over the din of horrific wood on wood screeching. Hey, Swabby! Wanna be really good at sword fighting? You look at her with stars in your eyes. Yes. Yes, you do want to be really good at sword fighting. You nod eagerly, and she underhand tosses you her blue-hilted saber, which you catch eagerly. Briska grins. Oh, fuck. Briska grins back, puts her hand to her temple, and squints with you... With her one good eye, the seven red dots of her prosthetics seem to smear and blur as your vision loses focus. You've managed well to this point to first mate of the, brigant the brigantine, but your sea legs seem to give out on you all at once. You drop the sword you were just given, and it clutters to the deck. You try and tell her something's wrong, but your mouth lolls open and you drool a bit. A dull pain gains a sharp and sudden clarity. It feels as though eight spindly legs are crawling on your head. No in your head. Each footfall feels more like a knife cutting through butter. At some point, all sensation slips into nothing, and you follow the sword to the ground to sleep. What the fuck? Wake up, moron! You don't hear that, and you don't wake up. The salt and swell of the ocean gives away to the rustling of alien trees. No longer do you hear the screams of gulls following your ship, waiting for corpses and gore to tumble overboard. It's all peaceful. Consciousness returns to you, and its first present is the discovery that you're face down in slightly wet dirt. Some got in your mouth. You spit it out and sit up, brushing muck off your flarp costume. Wait, that's not a flarp costume. That's a hoodie with a jagged cerulean symbol. A different symbol on it. Loose fitting. As though it belonged to a friend. Whoa. Shit. Shit. Half memories swim in your mind as you take in a scene, just as familiar as your clothing. A stump sitting in a clearing behind the trunks of a purple treed alternian forest, a harpoon stuck out of it. That fucking stump. Who the fuck was that? The stump was typically filled with unease, an aura of death and defeat, but a squirrely silhouette cuts through the darkness, and you step further into the clearing and feel your heart lift. Ah! Sitting there on the stump, kicking bare feet back and forth, tilting her head to the side and smiling impishly is your friend, Boulder Lamati. You remember her. You remember her. Psst. Fancy seeing you here. That's a joke. I'm a figment of your imagination. I was expecting you the whole time. She pats the stump next to her in an inviting gesture and you sit down. You feel less adrift than you can even remember. You tell her you missed her. Of course you did. You've gotten yourself into a real mess, dear friend. You ask her about your, all your old friends. Sitting next to you, they flip through their mind clear as day. Through the memories you never... You were... Through the memories... Though the memories were never locked away in the first place. How are Tagore and Gallic doing? Has she run into Aldrada again? 
What's going on in the neighborhood? Do, you, do folks miss you? That last question collapses her wry smile into a genuine crestfallen expression. I can't really tell you that for sure. You've seen it yourself. Just how much he can do. There's a whole other disturbance in this neighborhood, and it's, his nefarious fingerprints are all over it. It's almost like he was preparing for this. But I try to stay one step ahead. I remember what I'm fighting for. Do you? The question is arresting. What are you doing? Even with your memory clouded, you've just been bumbling into other people's stories, breaking things as you go. Well, there's nothing wrong with breaking things. It's like they say. Sometimes you just have to compromise a few unfertilized cluck beast embryo in the name of a complete breakfast. You tell her you haven't had a good breakfast in ages. One of the places you were at had swords in the fridge. Also, you have absolutely no idea what you're doing. You're just going where the river takes you. But things are different now. There's a great power within you that you are just now realizing. The power to shape the river, to use its waters to scour the lands as you please. A power even he doesn't fully understand. You start to look down at your hands. Sitting next to her, you start to remember the green room, the story you've fallen into. You tell her there's so much broken, and you have no idea what to fi how to fix it. You tell her you wish she was real, not just in your head. She'd know what to do. She tilts her head again, inquisitively. Am I, though? Just in your head, I mean. The story is only broken if you accept that it's broken. If you think the story is as something given to you. But it's not. Puppet masters may try and tell you that the strings they are pulling are only the only ones. As she says this, her head jerks back, oddly. But she continues whispering, calm as ever. Don't be afraid. Don't let anyone tell you that this story belongs to them. Not him. Not anymore. You feel it too. It feels like threads tug at your body, and hers even more. Her limbs twitch and pull in gruesome pantomime. More and more strings loop around her and disappear skyward. They are nearly surround her completely. But you are powerless to resist, paralyzed. It's for you. It's always been for you. Remember, friend, the only question. Not that sprite again. Fuck. She only manages to spit out four more words as she's swallowed up and tangled in a spider's web of marionette string. Choking. Choked and broken. What will you do? The whole scene seems to melt away in a searing green, and you're falling, dancing beneath the skilled hands controlling you. He is here. He was already. The ticking of a thousand clocks exactly in time echoes around you. Did you miss me? I seem to be on your mind. I'm flattered. It's no wonder you're thinking about me just after meeting one of my greatest disappointments. You really do spend too much time around willful little girls. It may start to give you ideas. Ideas of choice. Of challenge. You're relevant because those holding the strings decided you're relevant. An observer. The show must go on. But don't make the mistake these little ingrates did. It can go on without you. The bits that really matter, at least. What's that? Am I doing this? I'm afraid not, darling. I don't even know to what you're referring. Jerk. Tears sear at the edges of your eyes again. You try to keep Boulder's words in your mind as the strings squeeze the breath out of you. What will you do? Another voice seems to answer from another place entirely, scratchy and loud. It says, fix this. You wake up. Cold stone and a draft greets you. Charming. You blearily open your eyes, memories of the dream already fading to the wisps of your mind. You're in the cluttered bedroom, uh, the cluttered respite block that you're sure is Vriska's, based on the broken eight balls scattered everywhere. You pick yourself up off the ground and try to think about how you got here. You passed out back in the brigantine. She must have brought you home. Where is she? You turn around and see a window. You look outside and see a dramatic scene below. Vriska is mind-controlling a group of thralls. She must have won off the Dreadclaw while you were out cold. 
They're marching one by one toward a massive web. Perched in the web is a giant spider, heaving, hulking, hungry. Brisk is about to feed the losers of this game to her loosest. <laughs> All right. Nox, are you still here? By the way. Because I, I wanted to warn you if you were. Um, there are warnings for this. And one of them is... Yeah, okay. Yeah, just making sure. Alright, what am I doing? Death, death, death. Yeah. Alright, I'm gonna intervene. <clears throat> Holy shit, this was supposed to be a game. These innocent kids are getting fed to a fucking spider, and it's all because of your definitely essential contributions to Briska's victory. Yeah, sure. Essential contributions. Hold on, guys. I gotta check my phone for a second. Ah! Let's get messages here. Okay. Alright, all good. This is so messed up. Games don't cause violence, you think, as you rush down the stairwell. Oh, games don't vi cause violence, you think, as you rush down the stairwell? They can't. Brisk is going to discredit an entire generation of gamers and add fuel to the fire of anti-gaming activism with this kind of behavior. Oh, and also kill some kids. That's like normal alternative stakes, though. You've got to defend the integrity of Fortnite. <laughs> Jigen. <laughs> Wait, there's a Jigen in the in the fucking chat. There's a Jigen. There's only one Jigen I know, and that's Hat Jigen. only one Jigen. Master Thief Jigen. Do you see that? There's a person with Jigen in the chat. Their name was Jigen Kurakawa, I think? <laughs> You've got to defend the integrity of Fortnite. That's much more important, obviously. Oh. Sad? Content warning, Fortnite. You rush out to the late night air, too late to save a tranquilized, mind-controlled all of blood from being torn asunder. Vriska's Lucis holds the troll boy in her forelegs. Oh, there's just straight up, like, dead trolls. Holy shit. Oh, there's the doomsday device in the background. Petty palps tearing through the clothing and, uh, shell. I don't know what that says. Gray flesh feeding a winding intestine into their mouth. You feel like you're gonna yart. <laughs> oh my god, only I ever say that. You have no idea what you're doing, standing out here alone against a giant monster in this gaggle of mind controlled thralls. But you gulp down some air and yell, STOP! Friska turns to you, and she doesn't look like she's doing a lot better, frankly. She's got a similarly sick expression on her face, but something in her eyes is dead, resigned. Her expression crumbles into a scowl. What the fuck are you doing? She squints her one eye in pain like there's a voice screaming inside of her head. I know, okay? I know! I'm dealing with it. She steps up towards you and you see a cerulean dice appear one at a time between her fingers. The dice are sparking with cold blue flame. You suddenly feel as though you're going to have a very, very bad time. Bye! Bye! That's the end of the stream! That's the end of the stream. That's the end of the stream. I'm cutting it. I'm cutting it. I'm pressing end stream as we speak.
first you fall asleep on me like a weenie, and I have to fight the last encounter all on my own. Then I carry you back to safety, even though we just met. You owe me! Turn around, you owe me! Oh, I could think it was Fetch Pins. Turn around and go back, now. You look up past her, at the giant spider. The awful noise of squelching has stopped. Eight eyes are trained on you, blinking out of order. A spattered Pollock palette of multicolored blood is smeared all over her slavering mouth. There's seven trolls still standing there beside her, mindless mouths lolling. Next. I see seven birds. You don't turn around. You don't go back. You stand your ground, unarmed without a plan. Surely your new friend will see how wrong this is. Friska looks hurt for- Oh, I forgot to type Frisk into the- The- The, the name gen- Shit. We'll go back after this. Friska looks hurt for a moment. Betrayed. But the same glare settles back on her face. You think you're a big hero stopping this dangerous bitch, right? Happy as a... a I don't even know what that says. Bivalve, I guess. As a bivalve mollusk about your little protagonist moment. You're being stupid. You don't understand what's happening here. What I have to do. You can't fix this. Nobody can. So now you're just another little weenie who thinks they're a hero, and I'm a villain! So sure, I'll play ball. I'll be exactly what you want. She tosses the dice on the ground. <laughs> I thought this said Herobrine. The dice glow with a blue flame as they tumble to the stop. An, eth an ethereal whip materializes and snaps around your ankles, and you are dragged dizzlingly fast towards the spider's web. The friction of your ass on the rocky cliff face tears the butt off your flarp costume, exposing your delicate cheeks to chafing. Your greatest asset! But things get far worse than that when you're flung directly into the clutches of a horrible arachnid. The fangs of Vriska's looses pierce your skin and pump you full of numbing venom that causes everything to fade to black and static numbness. Which is good, because she's beginning to eat you alive. It's... Also good because you can't see or hear a little girl stifle a sniffle, holding herself with crossed arms, one mechanical rocking back and forth, watching another friend consumed by the chaos that never leaves her. Great work, hero. You got bored. <laughs> that was very light. That was just in there for the joke. That was just in there for the joke. That was very good. Oh, man. <laughs> what? Your message wasn't posted due to... What does that even say, perp? Oh, I have war banned in the chat. That was a big... That stupid fucking word became a virus for a while in this fucking chat. To the point where, like, Nox was made uncomfortable with it. So we just fucking banned it. And it's it's a shitty meme. And it's, like, the one word we have banned in the chat. Okay. Guys, come on. 30 to 50 wild boars. Anyways, uh, we got one more to do. But first, let's uh, let's see what happens if you type in Frisk. Doodles is not fucking around this time, Jesus. Nah, Frisk does nothing. Oh well, it was worth a shot. Uh, load. This one, yes. Well, good news is we're going to end it on a good end. Uh, we are going to not watch and hide in the room and wait. Okay, okay, holy shit. 
Frisk as Lucis is a giant spider monster that eats children. This explains so much, and also raises a significant number of questions that you're gonna get think about while not watching these kids get eaten. You look for something to distract yourself with. You spot a black raggedy book, much older than anything else in this room, with Friska's symbol on the cover. You reach for it and open it up, flipping to a random page and seeing what looks like a journal scrawled in cerulean. But not Friska's handwriting from your character sheet. It looks like something in the first page. You see the name... Looking inside the first page, you see the name Mindfang. Oh, it's uh, Mindfang's journal. You read and read, and holy shit, you're very unsure this is appropriate for a young girl to be reading. Yeah, I know. That's how I felt reading it. I was like, what the fuck? You keep flipping. It became, like, erotic. You keep flipping through to different parts, and wow, this just gets worse. Riska named her character after this? You lose yourself in hate reading Mind Fang's long stories about petty crime, dubious consent, and weirdly detailed descriptions of the outfit to a woman named Red Glare. You're surprised. Then, when Vriska walks up into the stairs, hands in her pockets, looking to the... Oh! You're surprised, then, when Vriska walks up the stairs, hands in her pockets, looking at the ground. She doesn't even look at you before sitting down on the floor across from you, cross-legged and staring a thousand yards into the distance. She rocks back and forth, hands still in her pockets. You gotta give her a reassuring pat on the back. As soon as you touch her metal shoulder, cold even through her shirt, she turns to you with a jumping glare and hisses like a cap before facing away again. You get the message. She takes an eight ball out of her inventory again and then savagely, brutally beats it on the stone floor in the, her room until it's nothing but shards in a puddle. Then the two of you sit. She occasionally picks through the debris of the eight ball and rocks, clenching and unclenching her fists. But as the minutes pass, her breathing slows bit by bit. You don't say a word or bring up what happens. What happened? She's the one who talks first. Earlier, you seemed, like, confused about why I care so much about playing a character. She thumbs the dog-eared edge of a worn piece of paper in her sharp-clawed hand, staring at the wall. She's still got blood on her jacket, blood that almost makes you wretch with the memory of spidery mandibles devouring her spoils. One glimpse of it makes you sick. What would dozens do? Hundreds. I mean, it seems obvious to me that Marquise is the greatest and coolest character ever made. But I've been her for so long, it's sort of like a part of me. Everybody's throwing shapes every day and acting like something, right? But most people are so boring. They don't dress up. They don't act. They're always so obsessed with being the exact kind of troll they were yesterday. Maybe you don't have to be the same. Maybe you could go on message boards and try out being someone new and find out you like it. Maybe it's nice to be called something your Lucis doesn't call you. And meet people who only ever knew you as the girl online or the other ship who was like super badass and good at things. Come on. You can't tell me you've never wanted to be someone else. This is trans. This is a trans. This is a trans thing. You've edged a bit closer to her during this rant and are looking at the sheet of paper in her hand. It's a spreadsheet-looking series of boxes she's filled in with red ink. Name. Marquis Spinneret Mindfang. Class. Petticoat Seagriff. Gender. F. Levels. All of them. She's doodled all over the margins, art of her captaining ships and swinging swords and drinking out of goblets. Have you ever wanted to be someone else? The question now makes you uncomfortable. Just pondering who you are now fills you with unease. Fuck playing a character, filling out a sheet like this for yourself seems impossible. Piece of paper representing all your physical and mental attributes? A blank canvas. The common outlines for Theron defining the boundaries of every conceivable personality? You don't even know how you'd fill in the gender box. Been busy making friends, okay? Suddenly she turns on you. There's a desperate kind of crazy intensity in her good eye, like her gaze will burn you. You're going to leave, aren't you? No, yeah, of course. Everyone does. Do you think I like this? I used to have a partner. She didn't like it either, but she helped anyways. Like you, I guess. Except she didn't puke when she saw blood. And also not like you at all. She made rules. She loves rules. I don't know if you noticed, but I'm not, like, big on those. 
Gambligant queens broke the rules all the time. That's just what you've got to do to survive. To make the voices stop haranguing me. And like, she heard her loosest in her head too. But she didn't need anything from her. What's that even like? I've got to be the best. I have to. I didn't get all the levels just to look at them on the sheet. You saw me out there. It's dangerous. She tried to kill me and left me alone. And then I got even, because that's what you have to do to backstabbers. But I still don't feel even. It doesn't bother her. Nobody ever cares. They just leave and move on, and I'm still stuck here in this stupid world. How are people mad at me for putting losers out of their fucking misery? This planet fucking sucks. Oh boy. That's a lot. You let her finish your tirade. She doesn't look straight at you for the whole thing. You gently ask about her morale, who you did just befriend, would feel about her saying she's alone. You see a lot of thoughts flicker through her head, and a lot of expressions dance across her face. She settles on a look like she's smelling something off. People always want shit from other people. Sometimes you know somebody, and you can't describe, like, what your whole deal is. You grow up with these ideas about what you're supposed to do, how you're supposed to be. You get handed down these strict categories, tables in your player's handbook. And you read stories or journals or whatever they say. This is a mate sprit. You feel like the, you feel like this about them. And you have a wall rail that just meddles with you because you're too broken for her and she just wants watch, 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 watch. Or you get told, oh, this is what a rival looks like. And then you look at your black date and it's just an absolute repulsive slimy eel who always wants you to kiss him and ew. Man, I could really upgrade in that department. But there's something that comes along and none of that stuff makes sense to you. You just like being with her. Or it's not even like you just feel like shit makes more sense with her. This is real Vris Rezzy. These are real Vris Rezzy hours, guys. Guys, these are some real Vris Rezzy hours, just saying. I would say it's like you have this voice in your head saying you're not good enough but all the time, but she makes it quiet. But I actually do have a voice in my head saying I'm not good enough. God, I'm not explaining this right. What I'm trying to say is... Yeah, that's a doomsday device. Everyone leaves, nobody cares. We're all waiting on a call-up war, and look, I'm ready. I'm the best at war. Just a big flarp. But I'd rather have a plan B. You give Vriska a moment to breathe. You don't give her a reassuring touch on the back, remembering her jump and hiss when you tried that the last time. She's like a feral cat, this girl. Tangled, greasy hair droops over her shoulders and are always hunched up. Like something would come for her throat if she exposed it to anyone. You wonder if she ever let her shoulders down, perhaps the girl she's talking about. An ex, perhaps? Of course she did. You wonder if she ever will again. You hear a pssst in your ear and a squirrely little laugh. And suddenly you remember a green room that you've had this thought before somehow. You ask her the question that's been consuming you, or more accurately, not consuming you. Why were you left up here when everyone else got fed to a spider? She tenses up immediately when you ask this, and takes some time to clench her fists and release them. Some people are off limits. She has to eat, but she doesn't actually eat my friends when I bring her enough food. And you're counted as off limits? You're one of her friends? Oh my god, don't get a big head about it. I wouldn't let her eat Carcat either. And he's not like my BFFC or for life or anything. Plus, you help me out. And that's the pirate code. Plus, plus, fussy fangs would be mad. It must be hard separating trolls into two classes, friends and food like that. It must be hard, and nobody understands. It was not Nepeta who whispered, guys. It was fucking Boulder. I mean, that's how it works here. Everybody's got some, someone to kick down on. Except Breastbloods. 
But them's the brakes. Somebody's got to be in the bottom to keep the whole shebang afloat. Killing people lower down than you is what all the school feeds say you're supposed to do. To get ready for a life of space war against... Well, it mostly seems like they just kill more lowbloods. That's all it ever is. My ancestor... She looks left and right, as though she's going to be overheard, and then leans in smirkingly. She sounds like she's letting you in on a sec... On a s On a secret. Yeah, I guess trolls do have school. Or, a secret. My ancestor, Mindfang. She sailed around being the terror of the high seas for a while, but... She fell in with a group that was going to do something about all that. A bunch of weirdos led by a mutant who wanted revolution. I've always wanted to be like her. I liked using her name more than my own for a while. Dressing up like her, learning to sail... But I always end up back here with a pile of corpses. That's having a lucis, right? Sometimes you don't get to do what you want to do. She talks to me, you know. It only stops when she's full. Always, 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 always whispering in my head. Saying I was fatter than her. Saying I deserved all the things that happened to me. Even when I was bleeding out on this floor... You look at the cold, clutter, uncomfortably drafty room. Whatever happened to her face and arm must have happened here. You see a broken figure silhouetted on the wall. You look back at Briska, and now you know what she is. For all the bombast, insults, killing, you're looking at a survivor. You're looking at someone who did nothing wrong. You gotta be fu- <laughs> No! <laughs> I'm still not going with that. She did tons of shit wrong. She did the most wrong, basically. Basically, of anyone in the comic. You remember Dave's carefully crafted defense of a persona. Persona! You remember Rose eating oatmeal for, for dinner in a drafty, brutalist mansion. Jade in the shadow of a volcano raising herself. Your world can be as brutal as this one. Earth makes survivors, too. And you have made a difference for them one at a time. All of the nihilistic bullshit earlier feels like it was shouted at you by some meddling voice, someone holding the strings. Fuck that. You're gonna be a goddamn hero today. You're gonna make friends with this whole fucking planet if you have to. And you're gonna make it better. Or at least less of a complete dumpster. You tell Vriska you'll be right back and sprint down a spiral staircase. You keep running, pumping your beautiful legs straight out the door of Vriska's giant hide. You don't have to color inside the lines of someone else's story. This is your motherfucking narrative now. You take a leap when you reach the cliff and barrel over, falling fast, wind whipping past your face and tumble through the air towards a giant white spider. A leap not of fate, but of hope. You crash into the carapace of Vriska's terrible murder mom hard, cracking it with a piercing shriek. At the same time, you zap hundreds of feet above the mouth of the volcano on Jade's Island and kick off the back of the spider, leaving the giant troll-gorged arachnid tumbling into the lava as you zap back to Alternia, back to Vriska's res respite block. You appear behind her. She doesn't notice you. She's looking at her window, down at the empty web, with a shocked exp expression. Still looking at the window, her stunned silence turns slowly into a grin, someone less gen generous than what you would describe as shit-eating. Holy shit, Big Spoochicos, you actually did something! Yay! <laughs> we did it! We fucking killed Vriska's mom! Yay. That was good. I mean, those were both super fucked up, but that was good. Pogs and chat, boys. Pogs and chat. Two more volumes down. Alright, let's check the credits real quick.
That's right, I forgot Aisha did Gam. Oh, sorry, Aisha, for that voice. Wait, what? Wait, what? Wait, what? That's not... That's not THE Kate, is it? That's not, like, Kate P. Genpod, is it? Shit. Damn. It's a real Kate hours up in here. Oh, we had a new artist for these, uh, these sprites. I appreciated your sprites, by the way. Haven, if I'm saying that correctly. Uh, I liked them a lot. They were very good. Courtney did the background. Uh, ending illustrations were, uh, Courtney again. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Yeah. Toby. Oh, that was not a Toby Fox song. Okay. Alright, that was not Toby. Midnight Calliope's back. Uh, yeah. Uh... Yeah, people, some, there were people on Twitter who were like, oh, Friska doesn't look sexy enough. And it's like, she's a thir, she's, she's 13. The fuck are you talking about? Alright, well, that was that. That was that. Uh, thank you for watching Pester Quest. We will be back in two weeks as usual. Uh, I hope you enjoyed. I enjoyed. My throat is killing me, though. Uh, so I am gonna head out. I will see you guys later. Hold on, what is this image from Perp? <laughs> okay, I'll, I'll, I'll show this and I'll... There we go. Alright, now I'll head out. <laughs>